Buffalo Bills are claiming six foot three, three hundred and twenty-five pound Eli Anku, defensive tackle who he lost on waivers to the Atlanta Falcons. Why this is such a big deal is because we lost him before the Daquan Jones injury. This is absolutely huge for Bills Mafia. But welcome to my channel, Bills News Consolidated. Eli Inku on X, putting the Buffalo emoji there, all signaling that he is coming back to Buffalo pending a physical at practice here. So looks like he is going to be coming back to Western New York, an Ontario native coming back home. You know our relationship with Canada there. I think this is a great fit. And I already mentioned Daquan Jones going down with an injury. Uh, Ed Oliver getting a little bit banged up here, right? Eli Inko was excellent when he was here. He was balling out. He was that big body defensive tackle. And yes, we have Jordan Phillips. We have Tim Settle. You know, uh, Kendall Vickers also getting involved. But we clearly saw against the Patriots, man, they were very, very inconsistent. At times, they blew up the play. But at times, they got blown off the ball and thrown out of the freaking house. Eli Anku, I've never seen get blown off the ball the way that we've seen some of these other players do. And Daquan Jones, even rumors here that Matt Milano is back in the building and rumors that they could eventually appear later in the season for maybe a late playoff game, maybe a Super Bowl. You never know, Bills Mafia. So I really am loving this. Six foot three, 325 pounds, sure up against the run. Now, a lot of people are assuming, oh, wait, is that why we restructured Deion Dawkins and freed up the $4 million? And this is not. This is completely an additional thing that just happened. Atlanta Falcons decided to waive him, and Buffalo Bills scoop Eli Anku up. I really believe that $4 million is definitely for a trade. Hope you guys check out my other video. I'll link it above for you. But some players I mentioned in that video that the Bills could be interested in really suggest you take a look. But thinking about it further, there's some additional players that I want to talk about right now. And a lot of people have brought up Hunter Renfro. Said to Devontae Adams of the Raiders, why not look at a dominant slot wide receiver, Hunter Renfro? And man, he definitely reminds me of that Julian Edelman, Wes Welker type. Some Bills Mafia are like, well, we have Andy Isabella. Like, why aren't we using Andy Isabella? And Andy Isabella, I think, has a very similar skill set. And what we're really looking for here is a slot wide receiver to pick up yards after the catch. Like Deontay Hardy, we've gotten the ball in his hands, but the yards after the catch really haven't been there. Also, a very shallow route tree for everybody on this in the tight end position in the slot. Even Dalton Kincaid, a very shallow route tree. So would bring in another Hunter Renfro, a similar type skill set to Deontay Hardy, to Andy Isabella, like would he ultimately excel in this scheme? And then knowing that the complexity of this offense, man, we heard Naeem Hines last year after we traded for him come in and say, man, this, this playbook is like Chinese to me, right? So there is a big time learning curve for players coming to this playbook. Now, the fortunate thing when we brought in Damian Harris was that you know, they had a similar scheme in New England as Brian Dable. Brian Dable spent 10 years with uh, Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots. So I think Damian Harris had a little bit easier of a transition coming to the Buffalo Bills, as well as the whole offseason, Naeem Hines being traded for in the middle of the year. And it shows you the impact of that. Like we really couldn't use Naeem Hines the way we wanted to use Naeem Hines last year when we traded for him. So I really think the Bills could be eyeing up some familiar faces that are out there for the Buffalo Bills, one of which cornerback position with the Pittsburgh Steelers and Levi Wallace. Now, I'm not necessarily a fan of that. I think we have some players here on this team, the cornerback position that need to step up. You know, Kyir Elam is there sitting there. Why bring in Levi Wallace right now? It would just kind of negate the progression of Kyir Elam in the background. You know, it's all about creating memorable moments. It's about creating those plays on the football field, under those bright lights. Practice is practice, but you got to show up on Sundays, Monday nights, and primetime football. And the other players here that are familiar, Harrison Phillips, another defensive tackle, but knowing that we just brought in six foot three, 325 pound Eli Inku. I don't think the Bills are necessarily going to be eyeing up that D-tackle position any longer. 
So what other positions are necessarily out there? You know, you still have wide receiver, another familiar face, the face of the franchise, Isaiah McKenzie with the Indianapolis Colts. Bills decided to part ways with Isaiah McKenzie. Could he return to the Bills? And the one thing with Isaiah McKenzie is that he was an ultimate teammate. You know, he had a great way of, you know, cheering up the locker room, getting everyone together. You know, some people, you know, he ruffled feathers, but at the end of the day, he was still funny and kind of helped the team progress. I think Isaiah McKenzie could actually come here you know, work together with, with Diggs, Davis, bring a little bit of that fun back. I know Diggs did mention and Josh Allen mentioning, you know, execution breeds fun, execution breeds energy, you know, but the film study that I did, I, did, I hope you guys saw the videos, but, you know, even the plays that were successful, yes, they weren't touchdowns, but, you know, Diggs is basically saying, like, we, we celebrate touchdowns, like, we don't need to celebrate anything else, but, I disagree. You know, I think you need to celebrate those little wins too in the middle of the field. You know, Aaron Rodgers and someone in the comments section below said, you know, he, Aaron Rodgers was telling his teammates this off season with the New York Jets, like if someone makes a good play, I want him to be mobbed. I want him to be mobbed by all the players. And I think the Bills need to do that, especially if Josh Allen is using this low positive energy Someone needs to bring that energy. Some other player on this team needs to hype up the players that are making good plays. And, you know, I think Isaiah McKenzie could be a piece in that. Yeah, especially on offense. We need an offensive player to, to do that for Bills Mafia. So, you know, I think the, the move was made to restructure Deion Dawkins for a trade. You know, the stars aligned that Eli Anku gets waived by the Atlanta Falcons and the Bills are able to pick him up, filling in that depth role for the loss of Daquan Jones. You know, uh, and the other thing I need to discuss here is the fact that teams across the league are playing those two high safeties. People call them two high safety shells. The two high safeties are ultimately taking a person out of run support. And when you're playing the Buffalo Bills, and you had those two high safeties, you're disrespecting our running game. You're disrespecting the fact that Josh Allen's not going to run it. You're disrespecting the talent of Latavius Murray and James Cook. So what is it going to take for teams to respect the Buffalo Bills running attack? And it could very well be having a dynamic running back. You look at a guy, right, like Derrick Henry. That would make them stack the box. You look at a guy like Saquon Barkley. That would make them stack the box and get rid of those two high safety shells, right? You're looking at a single high safety with that safety in the box, you know, protecting against a run. Even James Conner, you know, so I think all three of those running backs are good enough to dictate to opposing defenses to force them to stack the box and get into a single high safety. Therefore, it's going to help Stefan Diggs. It's going to help Gabe Davis. You know, we're going to have more opportunities in the passing game. So, yes, a lot of people want to make a move at the wide receiver position. And I understand Gabe Davis's best years, really his best year was working in rotation with Emmanuel Sanders, with also John Brown on the outside. A 96% snap count is just awfully high for Gabe Davis. And I think working in rotation makes sense. So even having Trent Sherfield work in rotation makes a lot of sense. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit like, subscribe. Man, what trade do you think is going to happen? Eli Anko is back. This is big time news, Bills Mafia. Appreciate you guys and go Bills.